everybody. Welcome back to Daily Dose at Home. My name is Lauren and I'm part of the Visitor Engagement Department here at the Calgary Zoo. Today I'm down at the wolf habitat with our three incredible Calgary Zoo wolves, Taya, Tadita, and Takoda. Today I want to take you on a little bit of a journey and explore a story about wolves that is amazingly important for us to know about the way ecosystems function in North America. Each ecosystem has really important parts. Plants, prey, and their predators. And these three Ps work together to form the system that keeps everything in balance. And something happens when one of those disappear. I want to tell you the story of the wolves of Yellowstone National Park. In the 1920s, there were no wolves left in the park south of Montana in the state of Wyoming. And the wolves had been in the park for a long time, but in the 1920s, due to human hunting, they weren't there anymore. So over the next 80 years, a lot of changes happened on the landscape of Yellowstone National Park. Let's think about that P, predator. Wolves are an apex predator. They're at the top of the food chain. So what happens if they're not there anymore? A lot of the prey populations, elk and deer, they go up. That sounds like a great thing. We love elk and deer. Elk and deer eat a lot of plants. They spend their days grazing on all kinds of vegetation. But when the plants are being eaten all day, uh, not as many plants, and it weakens root systems. And we don't see the tall trees in those habitats that have lots and lots of those prey species. Without the trees, we don't see as many small mammals, songbirds, or birds of prey. And over time, the rivers in Yellowstone started to erode, eroding the riverbanks and changed the way the water flowed. Now, in 1995, conservation scientists reintroduced wolves into Yellowstone National Park. And this had an amazing effect. Everything on the landscape started to change. The wolves, they eat those prey species, the elk and the deer, so they keep their numbers a little bit lower. With the elk and deer numbers being lower, what started to happen was the plants started to grow. Trees like willow and aspen started to grow, putting roots down into the ground. This changed the number of species in the area. Birds started to come back. Mammals like bears and beavers came back. What do beavers do? Beavers build dams and lodges that create habitat for other animals like ducks and muskrats. And over time, the riverbanks began to change shape and go back to the way they used to be. So in Yellowstone National Park, what we were able to see is a balance being restored between the plants, the prey, and the predators. You need all three in order to have the ecosystem be in balance. When you take out one of those levels, we get uh, a big change. What happened in Yellowstone National Park when the wolves were gone, something called the trophic cascade. That's a really long science term, but what it means is the top level changed everything underneath it. Now here in Canada, we have a really important grassland ecosystem the Calgary Zoo is working to protect. A few weeks ago, you learned about Swift Fox with Dr. Axel, part of our team here at the Calgary Zoo. Swift Fox reintroduction was the most successful reintroduction program of a nationally extinct carnivore. And putting carnivores back on the landscape is what helps make sure that these ecosystems are functioning properly. So we want to thank you for supporting Calgary Zoo conservation programs because when we work together to restore the plants, the prey, and the predators, we as the fourth P, the people, are part of that ecosystem. Thank you so much for watching today's Daily Dose at Home. For your activity today, we have a really cool interaction with ecosystems activity so you can explore what happens when you change something in an ecosystem. Thank you for supporting wildlife conservation.